be ministering in Dallas, Texas tonight. Uh, it's my second night of ministry last night, and I, I want to share a little bit. Let me digress and let me talk a little bit, okay? This is a little bit of a table talk or a little backyard porch chat with Dr. Ben Lim. I feel something for Dallas, okay? I feel something for Dallas. I'm excited. I believe I want to come back next year more often. I want to break through something in Dallas. I feel a shift in Texas and Dallas. I did not like Dallas for many years. Personally, that's my personal opinion, my personal preference. I always said I prefer uh, Houston over Dallas, but there's something for Dallas, and I feel a shift, I feel a pull, I feel a connection. Amen. So next year, I want to pray and prepare for some more things in Dallas, Texas, because I believe there is a ripe realm. Something is ripe for revival, for harvest, for a move here in Dallas area. Amen. But today I want to talk about suddenly, and I want to talk about the winds of change. And by the way, happy December and Shabbat Shalom. Okay, happy December, Shabbat Shalom. This is going to be a major month. I want you to comment major. This is going to be a major month. This is going to be a mega month. And today, all of you watching, help me to break to 200. Help me to break the 300 mark today. Amen. Because the man of God, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim is in the house. And I feel a shift. I feel a suddenly, okay? And and what, what do I mean by that? I, what I mean is one moment... I personally didn't like Dallas, and now all of a sudden, I'm feeling the word of the Lord. I'm feeling a whirlwind. I'm feeling a cyclone, a tornado. I'm being caught up in a realm, shaka. I'm being caught up in the Holy Ghost. I'm being caught up by the Lord, where I'm feeling a major shift and a major change. And I believe many of us right now, we are in the middle of the greatest change, shift, transition of our lives. You are in the greatest transition of your life. You are in the middle of the greatest transition of your life. And how do I know? Because I since believe that in this month of December, in this season, all of a sudden things are up in the air. If this bears witness with you, if I'm talking to you right now, I want to say preach. All right. I want to say preach because I, I believe right now many things are caught up in the air. I feel a sense that right now there's We've stepped into a realm of the unknown. We have stepped into a realm of the unknown. I'm going to preach to you hard right now because I feel the power of God. I feel like I'm breaking through something. We, we have stepped into the realm of the unknown. We have stepped into a month of mystery. We have stepped into a realm and a month of mystery. And, and it's like you stepped into the cloud. But God says, do not be afraid. Do not hesitate. Do not hold back. Step in. Go in. Go all the way in. Do not hesitate. Do not hold back. Step into the cloud. Amen. Do not be afraid because this month of December, there's a, a realm of the unusual where suddenly are going to take place in your life. Things are going to shift quickly. And many of us right now, we're afraid and we want to hold on and hold back to the past. We want to hold on to the things that have passed, but many of us are afraid because we sense that God is bringing us deeper. God is taking us higher, amen. We sense that there's something uh, right around the corner. Right around the corner. And I believe right now, God is wanting to release suddenly in your life. Why? Because things are going to change. You made some plans. The Bible says, though a man plans his ways, uh, uh, though a man plans his ways, God ordains, orders his steps. And thank you, Relina Rascon, for being a subscriber. Though a man plans his ways, the Lord orders his steps. I thought I was going to plan a church in, in Houston. I felt something for Houston. I still do. But now I'm here in Dallas, and I'm feeling the same thing I felt in Houston. Though a man plans his ways, the Lord orders his steps. A way seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. So I'm telling you right now because I sense God is rearranging things. God is repositioning things. And even what's going on in China, what's going, in, going on in Brazil, do you think it's a coincidence that even right here, right now, uh, the World Cup is going on in Qatar? Amen. Do you think there's a coincidence? No, it's a clash competition, a battle of nations. It's a clash of the kingdoms, a clash of the titans. And what I sense right now is all around the world is there is a major change. There is a mega shift. There is a great change that's coming and happening. But hear me now, you need to, you need to open up. You need to be willing. You need to be available. You need to allow the Lord uh, to move freely. You need to, and not hold on. I, this, listen, this is the word of the Lord. I need you to hear this. This is the word of the Lord right here. You need to not hold on because the spirit of God is about to breathe. The spirit of the Lord is about to breathe and there's going to be some winds of change. There's going to be some new things, some suddenlies. There's going to be a shift that's going to come suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. New connections, new assignments, new alignments. 
new appointments. There's going to be new things, new visions, new dreams, new desires. And this is the difficult thing for most spiritual people. If you're prophetic like me, if you are prophetic and spiritual, amen, then that means that you are constantly getting revelation. So how do you deal with constant revelation? You're always getting revelation. You feel like you're getting inspiration. So how do you deal with constant revelation, constant revelation and inspiration? Sometimes it's too much. It's like, oh, Jesus, it's too much. I feel like I'm dying. It's too much. Oh, you're giving me too much. It's too much, God. Has anybody ever felt like God's doing too much or it's too much? Amen. And sometimes it's so overwhelming. And we don't want it to fall to the ground. We don't want it to be wasted. Amen. And praise God, we just broke the 200 mark. Help us to break the 300 mark today and beyond. Amen. But many of us, we feel like, oh my God, it's too much. Listen, are you hearing me right now? I'm sorry if I feel too excited. I feel like I'm, I'm going at 100 miles per hour right now. I'm just excited. I feel the winds of change. I feel a shift. And God is saying, do not be afraid to let go. Do not be afraid to let go and to let God. Because in this month of December, in this Hebrew month of Kislev, there's going to be great change. There's going to be great settlements. You're going to be received. You're going to be accepted. Doors are going to close. Doors are going to open up. Listen, some of you are pressing into the greatest breakthrough of your life. Some of you are pressing into the greatest open door of your life, the greatest opportunity of your life. So therefore, many of you are feeling this tug of war. You are feeling this tug of war. You are feeling this tug of war where the Spirit of God is wanting to pull things back. What does that mean? The curtain is being pulled back. The veil is about to be pulled back. God's about to reveal some things. God's about to release some things. It's going to come suddenly out, out of the blue, out of nowhere. It's going to fall right onto your lap. I prophesy right now. Miracles are going to fall right onto your lap. Blessings, breakthroughs, the answers you've been waiting for, the, the prophecy you've been waiting for, come on somebody, it's going to fall right into your lap. It's going to come suddenly. It's going to happen out of nowhere. Right when you least expect it. Right when you least expect it. You're not going to try for it. You're not going to labor for it. You're not going to, you're not going to toil. You're not going to work hard for it. But it's just going to come suddenly. A new open door, a new opportunity. And I need you to hear this. You need to yield yourself to the Lord right now. You need to let go. Some of you need to reevaluate your commitments. Some of you need to reevaluate your alignment. Some of you need to reevaluate right now. Is this the best thing for me? Why? Do you know why? Because good is always the enemy of great. You're saying, Pastor Ben, Dr. Ben, it's all good right now. I'm in the best season. Of my life. I'm blessed. I'm happy. But good is the enemy of the great. And there's a greater level. There's another level. Someone say amen. There's a greater and another level. And God wants you to prepare yourself to get ready for the next level, for the great. What was acceptable in the last season is not acceptable in this season. Amen. If you hear me, give me some hearts and likes. Make sure you share this on your wall, friends, because I sense so strong. God is saying, get ready for suddenly. And I said this, I think it was on Clubhouse the other day, but I said, your availability prepares you for your suddenly. Making yourself available prepares you for your suddenly. Someone say suddenly. Suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. A financial miracle, a financial harvest, a phone call. Get ready for inboxes, get ready for DMs, get ready for messages, emails, calls, inquiries, invitations. There's going to be a suddenly that's going to come to you. Amen. You've been praying, you've been waiting. Jacques Caraba, you've been, you've been praying, you've been waiting, you've been pressing, you've been sowing, and you wanted to give up, you wanted to throw in the towel, but suddenly. And why am I sharing this? Because I believe in this month of December, God is saying, get ready for suddenlies. God is saying, get ready for suddenlies. But you have to make room for God. You have to make room for the Lord. You have to make yourself available to Jesus. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. You have to make yourself available. So I feel right now there are suddenlies coming. Suddenlies, winds of change blowing. And even for myself, I feel the Lord drawing me near to the secret place. Because even as I'm here in Dallas, I am feeling an unusual realm of revelation. An unusual realm of revelation. So I've been journaling. I've been praying. Oh, Rabba, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord. She got a, there's an open heavens right there. Just stand in the open heavens and receive. Good to see you, Pastor Steve. Stand under the open heavens and receive. Because right now there's new assignments, new visions. It's going to come out of nowhere. And I need you to hear this. You have permission. Give yourself permission to reevaluate. Give yourself permission to rethink, to change. 
give yourself permission to reevaluate some relationships, your commitments to jobs, to ministries, to businesses. Give yourself, listen, there's an adjustment coming. I prophesy correction. There is a correction coming to the economy. There is a correction coming to America. There is a correction coming to the United States, to the church, to your life. There's a correction coming. Some say correction. And though it's delayed, it shall not be delayed any longer. But we are in a season of suddenlies right now where God is suddenly shifting. You were going one way, but all of a sudden he says, go that way. You were pursuing something. All of a sudden God says, now it's done. Pack up your bags and leave. Now it's finished. You, we need to be sensitive to the winds of God. We need to be sensitive to the whispers of the Holy Ghost. Shut that up. This is a season to lean in. This is a season to abide, to listen. Are you and I really listening? Hallelujah. I declare God is making room. God is decluttering your space. God is decluttering your atmosphere, your schedule. He is decluttering right now in Jesus' name. He is simplifying by the power of God. There's a simplification anointing coming right now. He is simplifying right now in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. So you need to give yourself permission. You need to give yourself permission to reevaluate. Put everything on the table. And even now I see in the spirit of vision. I see a vision. I need you to hear this. I see a vision. And in the spirit, I see all these things on the table. And God is saying, do not let anything be set in stone yet. Nothing is set in stone yet. Let it be before you and wait upon me for I will give you the confirmation of whether to go or to stay, whether to go or to be. I will give the word and the confirmation, but do not be in a haste. Do not be in a rush. Do not be in a hurry. What about I see papers, I see plans, schedulings, contracts. I see things spread out on the table right now. And God is saying, lay it down before me and watch what I'm going to do, how I'm going to confirm and highlight. Someone say amen. How I'm going to confirm and highlight, how I'm going to begin to move upon your life in this season. How I'm going to begin to breathe afresh on some new dreams. Some say new dreams, new things, new assignments, new visions. You need to let go and let God. And honestly, even for myself, I'm praying. I'm reevaluating. I got some things. I got I got about three different things I'm praying into coming into this coming year. And one of them is major. One of them is major. But that shift and that sacrifice. I need to hear obedience is greater than sacrifice. That obedience, that step of obedience. It's hard, I know. It's hard to let go of your Isaac. Well, I'm preaching to myself now. It's hard to let go of your Isaac, but something better is coming. It's hard to let go of what's been the best thing in your life. It's been great. It's all that you know. It's all that you've been doing. This is the common. This is the norm. This is your baby. But let go, friends. And watch what God's going to do. Are you hearing me today? I don't know. I feel so much fire, but I want you to catch this. I don't just want you to catch the fire on this broadcast. I want you to hear these words. So Lord, help me to articulate the prophetic. Help me to articulate your words properly. Help me to prophetically articulate what is going on in the spirit and in the atmosphere right now. Help me, Lord. My mouth is yours. I am your vessel in Jesus' name. But the Lord says, put a pause on it. Put a pause on it. Like many of us, we were running at 100 miles per hour. But all of a sudden, put a pause on it. Put a break on it. It's okay to stop. It's okay to pause. That's why, and even yesterday from a 7M Glory Equip for my group mentorship, I was talking about Sabbath and rest, Shabbat. It's okay to celebrate Shabbat. You don't need to be on all the time. And I'm preaching to myself. I don't need to be on Facebook. I don't need to be on social media. Listen, this is not a competition. You obey the Lord. I need to obey God. That's it. I'm not trying to build something. No, I'm just trying to be faithful to the words of God. Amen. And in every season, things shift and change. And this is a season of suddenlies where suddenly God is saying, you're going 100 miles per hour now. Stop and park. Don't just park, but get out of the car. And I want you to walk. 
because I want to talk to you. I want the fresh air of the outside. I want that to hit your face. Rabbi, there's a shift, there's a suddenly. There are the words of God, amen. The words of God, the whispers. And here, here's the thing, you and I, we can be so consumed with the fire, the earthquake, and the whirlwind. It's the story of Elijah. We're consumed with the big things, the grandiose. Come on, somebody. The fire, the earthquake, and the whirlwind. But it's the whisper. So I sense God is saying, son, daughter, I want to whisper to you. Shut up about, I want to blow a fresh breath, fresh winds upon you. Rakata, I want to blow fresh fire over your life. So there's a fresh word. There's a now word. There is a manna rhema. There is something now. Amen. You were going one way, but now he redirects you to go another way. You were going one direction, but now suddenly, all of a sudden, the Lord redirects you to go a different way. Are you hearing me today? Because God is saying, get ready for suddenlies. Get ready for suddenlies. Jesus. Rabba Get ready for suddenlies and winds of change. Things are going to shift and change, friends. And, and this requires a level of faith. This requires a level of faith. Oh, I'm preaching good today. Some of us are okay with doing what we're good at. We're okay with doing what we're good at. But are you just maintaining out of comfort? Or are you taking a risk and a step of faith into the realm of the unknown? Are you challenging yourself to try and do something different that may reap different fruit? Remember, if you do not like what you're reaping, then you have to reevaluate what you're sowing. If you do not like the fruit that you're experiencing and reaping, then you have to reevaluate what you are sowing and who you're sowing into. Amen. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. And I feel such a shift. I feel such a suddenly. And I'm preaching to myself. Because remember, every prophetic voice, whatever they release, they are experiencing it themselves at a, as a prophetic sign. As a prophetic sign. And I'm feeling something for Dallas, friends. Not just real estate, not just land property, but I feel something for Dallas. So I feel like the Lord is possibly leading me, challenging me with faith to say, step into Dallas. And this is different from what I felt for Florida and even Houston. Listen, I want to plant something in Florida. I love Florida. I love the beaches. I got a lot of favor there. But this is different. I feel a different stirring, a different unction. Hallelujah. So we have to be sensitive to the whispers of God's heart. We have to be sensitive to the pullings, the unctions, the utterances of the Spirit of God. We have to be sensitive. Because in one way, one season, one direct, God directs you to that season. And now, boom, He directs you to the next season. Rapid obedience is true obedience. I'm going to say that again. Rapid obedience is true obedience. Good to see you, Timothy. God bless you. Shannon, Christy, good to see you. I got some of my favorite people here, praise God. Nina, watching from Fiji. God bless you. Pastor Steve, good to see you on and encouraged still. Glory be to God. But rapid obedience is true obedience. Rapid obedience. And for me... And, and like I said, I want to go back to this. This is the difficulty of a prophetic person, all right? We as prophetic people, we're always feeling something new. But were you faithful to the old thing? That's, that's the conflict, right? We're always looking for the new. We're always feeling things, sensing things. It's like, wow, there's opportunity, there's open doors. But are you being faithful to the old? Did you complete the assignment of the old? And that's what you need to discern. That's what you need to discern. Did I complete the assignment of the old season? Did that grace lift? Did that season change? Am I in a new season? Did it shift? Did it suddenly begin to change? Am I laboring somewhere? I need you to hear this. Am I laboring somewhere where the grace lifted? Once again, it's good, but is it God? It's good, but is it great? It's good, but am I making room for the next level? 
And I, I want you to hear this analogy. If I'm talking to you, if this is ministering to you, if this bears witness for you, say amen and give, give me some hearts and likes. But I, I, want, I, I want to share this analogy. Imagine here. All right. Double tree, double, double. Amen. Imagine I got this cup and this is 100%, 100%. I can only give 100% to one thing or many things. I can only give 100%. So I only have 100% to give. All right. So why am I sharing this? I, I cannot give 100% to a hundred million things. It has to be to a number of things. It has to be to a number of things. If I give myself 100% to open heaven's world, what's gonna happen? If I give myself 100%, well, what about 20% to Dallas, 20% to open heaven's world, 20% to Colorado, 20% to New Mexico? Does that make sense? Lord help me. <laughs> Shaka. I'm just saying to use your time wisely. Allocate your resources wisely. Because this is an important season, friends. This is a season of major harvest. This is a season of great harvest. So allocate, use your time, your resources wisely. Rababa, be wise with where you sow. Be wise with where you, where you plant where you commit yourself to. And I said this on my Instagram live just about two hours ago. And for me, I feel like the Lord's really doing something in the Southwest of the United States, Southwest. And I remember somebody said this to me, I think on Instagram a few months ago. And he said, wow, Dr. Ben, it looks like you go to the Southwest a lot. I got Hawaii, California, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and now Texas is opening up. I love the East Coast, trust me. I love the East Coast. East Coasters love me too. I love Florida. I like New York. I like Pennsylvania, Chicago. Chicago's not really East Coast. I, I love the East Coast, but that's but there's something about the Southwest of the United States. Shut up, blah, blah, blah. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. But there are winds of change. Change, change, change. The Lord is suddenly moving and maneuvering you around. Yesterday, there was a family, they drove from Oklahoma three hours to be with us. There are winds of change suddenly moving around, my friends. Rabababasata. So I feel like the Lord is apostolically, all right? And of course we got Route 66, but I feel like the Lord is apostolically spreading me out to the Southwest and to the West. I love Pacific Northwest, but God, I don't know why the doors haven't fully opened again, but it's all right. Seasons for reasons. Seasons for reasons. Hallelujah. Seasons for reasons. But there is a suddenly coming, friends. There is a suddenly, there is a change. There is a shift. And I sense God is saying surrender. Surrender. Lay it all out on the table. Lay yourself before the altar. Lay yourself before God and watch what happens. Surrender. If you lay down your Isaac, then he will give you a nation. Oh God, this is good, but you want the great? You want the more? You want the better? You want the next level? I want you to come in next level anointing. The next level of the anointing on your life is connected to that next level of sacrifice. That next level of sacrifice. Am I preaching yet? Am I preaching yet? Annette says, I love this life. God bless you, Annette Johnson. Am I preaching yet? The next level of the anointing on your life is connected to the next level of sacrifice. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying, let go. Because I'm about to surprise you. Let go because I am about to wow you. I'm about to shock you. I'm about to suddenly drop something into your life. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to come out of nowhere. 
but you have to make yourself ready. You have to get ready. Hey, you have to get yourself ready. And even last night in this Dallas home group, I was preaching on preparation for glory. We say we want the glory, but are we busy? Are we occupied? What did Jesus say? Let the dead bury their own dead. Let the dead bury themselves. Come on. you. Once you put your hand to the plow, don't look back. What does that mean? Stop looking back. There's something new. There's something fresh. There's something more that God has for you. <clears throat> there's something more. There's something more. Hallelujah. There's something more. There's something more that God has for you. And I declare and I decree that this month, <clears throat> God is going to release suddenlies. All right. We are in the Hebrew month of Kislev. We are in the Hebrew month of Kislev. And Kislev, <clears throat> the original root word of Kislev means to flank. Someone say flank. Now, isn't that interesting? It means to flank. Now, I know a lot of us, we know the word flank, maybe from cow or from meat. <clears throat> but what the word flank means, it means to side swipe. It means to side swipe. So the, he, the original word of kislev is from the root word. And the root word kislev means to flank, means to side swipe. Side swipe. That's why in his month of kislev is the month of Hanukkah. Because the enemies were sideswiped by God. The devil was sideswiped. What does sideswipe mean? It means you got swiped on the side and it shocked you and surprised you. So Kislev, this month in December, Kislev, the original meaning means sideswipe. And to be sideswiped means it catches you by surprise. It catches you out of nowhere. You got clipped. You Something happened in your life out of nowhere. Amen. <clears throat> so that's the story of Hanukkah. The ragtag group, the lowly of these, and people have got to help me to break 300 today. Amen. Help us to break 300. Let's build the atmosphere and break through today. Some say breakthrough. So that's the story of Hanukkah. We're a ragtag group of common Israelites. They banded and gathered together and they flanked the enemy. They sideswiped the enemy. Are you ready for God? To sideswipe your enemies. Are you ready for the Lord? Come on, somebody. Are you ready for the Lord to come around from behind and to catch your enemies by surprise? I, I want to prophesy this. You are about to catch your enemies by surprise. You are about to catch your enemies by surprise. There is a surprise that's coming to you. There is a surprise and a shock that's coming. You are about to sideswipe your enemies. And the Lord of hosts is about to do it. <clears throat> People of God, if the video is delayed, I want you to comment. Is it delayed or is it clear? It looks clear to me, very clear to me. But the Lord is about to sideswipe and flank. Which means catch you by surprise. Ready or not, here he comes. Ready or not, here he comes. He is about to catch you by surprise. Jesus, Jesus, he is about to catch you by surprise. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. This month, suddenlies and surprises. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to happen fast, which means you have to move quickly. And that's something that I've learned. In the glory, things are quick. They move at the speed of light. Bam, 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 bam. In the presence, in the glory, in the power. Bang, 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 bang. Things move at the speed of light. It's quick, quick, quick. Fast, fast, fast. Cha, 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 cha. Fast, fast, fast. Rabbi, and that's why a lot of people cannot catch up to you. A lot of people cannot uh, stay in sync with you. I break every distraction. They cannot step in sync with you. A lot of people. Because you're moving so fast by the Spirit of God. It's it's always changing. Always revelation. New facets. New. Boom, boom, boom. Rakata. Huska tarabrata. Fire.
fire of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Jesus. You have to be in the spirit to catch what God's doing. And he, hear me now. Sometimes your spirit man gets so much word of revelation, impartation. But it takes time for your mind and your soul to process. So you got to give your mind and your heart time to process. Are you hearing me? You're getting downloads, revelation in the night hour. So when you wake up, you have to give time to process. Jesus. Because your spirit is moving at the speed of light with God. Whether you realize it or not. And that's why some of you, you feel out of alignment. I need you to hear this. Some of you, you feel out of alignment. You're like, something's not right. Everything's great. But something's not right. Everything's great. But I feel like I'm out of alignment. Because God's moving at the speed of light. And you're here. And God's here. And you're like, okay, I need to align myself. I need to align myself right now with God. I need to get into alignment. I need to get into, get into position right now. So your spirit is going at 100 miles per hour, but your soul is processing at 30 miles per hour. Jesus. Rabba Sotoro Brata. Jara Brata. So there is an alignment and a correction coming. There is an alignment and a correction coming from heaven. Thank you, Lord. I feel the Lord so strong right now. But even now as I'm preaching, I feel like the Lord's bringing alignment. I don't know what it is. It's the unusual realm. The unusual realm of God has opened. The unusual realm. Jesus. Where things are up in the air. Things are up in the air. Jesus. Jesus. Just pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Just pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Rabba karabra sata. Rabba sarabranda redo shatarabrata. Rabba baba baba setarabrata tarabrata. Repentance. Changing your mind. Accelerates revelation. Repentance accelerates alignment. Rabba baba. Rabba changing, turning your mind accelerates alignment and revelation and many of you are feeling a big change you're feeling a big change you're feeling big change you're feeling a big change 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 correction correction correct you're feeling a big change but you can't pinpoint it yet so the lord is saying step in the glory Rabba said that there is a great change coming, a great shift. Get ready for expansion. Get ready for expansion. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Shingara Brata. God is saying, make room and make space. Make room and make space. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. We must prepare ourselves for the harvest. We must prepare ourselves for the more of God. For a suddenly. There is a suddenly that's going to come. There's a suddenly that's going to come. Jesus. Rabas Korobranda de Roshata. Let go and let God. The Lord is saying surrender. The Lord is saying surrender and let go. Get ready for mega expansion. Jesus. And remember, like I said, the good is the enemy of the great. So God is challenging many of us right now <laughs> to
to let go of the good. I'm telling you, I feel challenged myself. I'm preaching to myself right now. I feel so stirred. I'm so convicted. Let go and let God. Make space, make room, get ready, prepare yourselves. Let go of your Isaac. Jesus. Rabba Baba Re Kandala Loskata Randara Broskata Ramblo Katare Broskata The fire of God's falling right now. As you give your sacrifice named Isaac, the fire of God's falling. Fire of God's falling. But you will look back. <laughs> Hear me now, you will look back and rejoice. That you said yes. That you said yes to Jesus. That you said yes to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name, Father. We bless your name. Rabba, do you know what it is? It's a birthing. It's a birthing. Imagine you just got pregnant out of nowhere. And you're like, what? You just got pregnant. You got mixed feelings. Come on, let's be real now. You found out you're pregnant and you just got mixed feelings. Yes, you love your husband, your wife, you love your spouse, you love Jesus. But you just got pregnant. You just got pregnant and you're like, say what? I just got prego. And you're like, this is new. This is different. This is a little scary. I need a sacrifice. I need to change my life, my schedule, my diet. I'm feeling things that are different. I'm going through emotions and I'm extra sensitive right now. And I'm going through different things in my body, in my life. I'm carrying a baby. I'm carrying a life being a form. And I'm like, whoa, it's great news. Amen. But I have to go through some shock right now. I have to go maybe through some sorrow and through some grief because the old me is now dead. And I have to get ready for the new me. I have to get ready to become a father or a mother. I have to get ready for to take care of a new life being, a new sea creature 24-7. So you feel a mixture of things, shock, grief, joy. Come on, somebody, my goodness. And you're like, whoa, I just got pregnant. I just, so it's, it's all new. Rabbi, and that's what many of us, Jesus, are feeling right now. God is saying, you're pregnant. You're pregnant. <laughs> no wonder you were moody. Come on, somebody. No wonder you were a little moody. No wonder you were a little more sensitive. You were feeling a little sick. No wonder because you didn't know you were pregnant. These are signs. Don't say signs. These are signs of change. Signs of change. These are signs of change. Signs of suddenlies. Robo Bobosa. My goodness. If I'm talking to you, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. And share this on your wall. These are signs of birthing. Signs of suddenlies. Signs of change. And you didn't know it. But finally you got tested and you're like, all right, Lord. Hallelujah. You're pregnant. I said, you are pregnant, friends. You are impregnated and you are about to birth. So something new is coming. Something fresh is coming. I'm telling you, Dolores, something new is coming. Bella Ministries, something new is coming. Melissa Filler, Rob Filler, something new is coming, guys. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? Something new is coming. The impregnation of God, Jesus. Get ready for the miracle child. Get ready for the miracle. Ramama, it's coming. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. 
Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Signs of settlements. Some say signs of settlements. Are you letting yourself? Are you have you given yourself permission to wow? All right. Thank you, Lord. Now now check this out. There's somebody you met and you love them. You you think you love them. You're not married to them yet. But there's somebody you met, and you're like, wow, this person is all that and a bag of chips. All that and a bag of chips. This person checks off so many things off of my personal marriage list. Oh, this. But all of a sudden, somebody better comes. I, I want you to hear this, okay? I'm not being sufficient or carnal at all. I want you to hear that. I'm using this as an example. You thought you loved somebody, and it was all good. It was, it's good. Hallelujah. And it checks off so many things from a list. But all of a sudden, you meet somebody that seems to be better. You meet somebody that catches your attention. You're like, whoa. It's a suddenly. You're not married to this person yet. It's a suddenly. So how do you shift? How do you adjust? Are you hearing me today? <laughs> Are you hearing me today? You're not married. You're not engaged. It's good. And it was the best you had. But all of a sudden, somebody or something better comes. You're not married. You're not in covenant. So you're not obligated to nothing. Come on, somebody. Who you know is that Ishmael comes before the Isaac. Your Ishmael comes before the Isaac. So the good always comes before God. It's good, but is it God? And some of us need to give ourselves permission. Come on. Some of you, you got to give yourself permission to be like, you know what? I think there's something better. There's somebody better out there. There's somebody better out there. There's something better out there. There's something more that God has for me. I'm not finding it in this church. I'm not finding it in this ministry. I'm not finding it here. I'm not finding it in my job, my workplace. There's something better for me. It's good, but there's something better. Ha! Amen. I want to give you five signs of suddenlies. Five signs of suddenlies. Amen. Five signs of suddenlies. If you're enjoying this today, say amen. And give me some hearts and likes. My goodness. I felt the fire of God. I felt the intensity. I feel like the intense. Thank you, Doris and Santiago, for being a subscriber. God bless you. And I feel like the intensity is now done for now. But I want to give you five signs of suddenly. All right, number one. First sign of a suddenly is that you feel dissatisfied and discontent. You feel dissatisfied and discontent. And it's not, it's not like, you know, it, it's, I don't know, it, it's, it's not like a toy, right? But you feel bored. You're like, God, I'm bored. I've conquered all my giants. I've slayed every devil. And imagine David on top and he did everything that he did. And that's why he fell into sin with Bathsheba. Because he was at the top of the world. So the first sign of a suddenly is that you are discontent. You are discontent. Okay? I, I want you to follow me. First sign of a sudden that you are discontent. Number two, the second sign of a suddenly is that you are being drawn away. You're being drawn away to Jesus. You're like, you know what? Thank you, Andy Fraser Curry, for being a subscriber. Thank you. God bless you. The second sign 
of a suddenly is that number one, you're discontent and you're like, I'm complacent, I'm bored. I feel like I'm just doing this ritualistically, religiously, methodologically, just nothing fresh. And then now you're like, you know what? Let me draw away. So what do you do? You spice it up a notch, right? You spice it up a notch. You go on a, on a spontaneous date with your husband, with your wife. You go on a spontaneous date away with God. You spice it up, spont spontaneity. You add some spice to it, amen? So second sign of a suddenly is that you draw away and you feel like God's wanting to draw you away. You feel like God's wanting to draw you away. Deeper to himself, something different, all right? The third sign of a suddenly, the third sign of a suddenly is divine appointments, divine appointments. So a divine appointment many, many times has to come, you meet somebody or you meet something and it hits your face like a freight train. It hits your face and you're like, whoa. All of a sudden you feel stirred and inspired and challenged. You feel stirred. I'm, I'm telling you, I came to Dallas and I feel inspired. I feel stirred. I feel challenged. I feel inspired being here in Dallas. I'm like, you know what? This might be some new ground territory for me to conquer. <laughs> this is my, I feel money, I feel wealth, I feel opportunity. I feel opportunity in the atmosphere here. Hallelujah. So the third sign is divine appointment, where something stirs you or something inspires you and challenges you. Many times it's a person or it's a place. It's a person or it's a place. And you feel like, wow, People many times represent a new season. People represent a new season, all right? So that's the third sign of a suddenly. Third sign of a suddenly. Uh, divine appointments, okay? There is, you feel like something hit you in the head. You, you got hit in the head with a screwdriver, and you're like, Bleh. what happened? You got hit in the head with a screwdriver. You got hit in the head. God's trying to catch your attention, all right? Number four. The fourth sign of a suddenly, praise God. The fourth sign of a suddenly is an opportunity, opportunity. So you feel like there's space. You feel like there's availability, opportunity. You feel like there's an opening. It's called an open door. So you feel like there's an open door opportunity for you to shift, for you to transition. Hallelujah. For you to shift, for you to transition. You feel like there's an opportunity. After you had the inspiration of the divine appointment, now you feel the grace of the opportunity and you feel the grace to transition. And now you're considering saying, okay, maybe I feel a shift. Maybe I, I need to shift something. Maybe I need to change something. So that's the fourth sign of a suddenly. A, the fourth sign of a suddenly is there is an opportunity. It's like the Macedonian call. They began to call on Apostle Peter, come over here, come over here. And out of nowhere, it was an open door and opportunity. Out of nowhere, say out of nowhere. And uh, Apostle Peter went. And guess what? The whole house got saved. A whole house, a whole region got touched by the gospel of Jesus. They all got filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Shakarabata. And the fifth sign of a suddenly, the fifth sign of a suddenly. Hallelujah. The fifth sign of a suddenly. It is confirmation of his presence. The confirmation of his presence. The pleasure of God's there. The joy of the Lord is there. You feel peace. You feel happy. When you are in a suddenly. Yes, you take faith and it takes a risk. But when you are in a suddenly. You feel the pleasure of God. You feel the glory of God. You feel the shalom of heaven. My goodness. 
when you are in a true suddenly, it may be different and it may be scary. It may be out of your box, out of your norm, and that's why it's a suddenly. But there is a confirmation of his presence because he's there. He's there. And where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. He's there. The fifth sign of a suddenly is that he's there. There's confirmation of his presence. There's angels. There's joy. There's glory. There's financial favor. There's favor, favor, favor. When the favor departs, when the grace lifts, then things become hard, hard, hard. No finances, no oil, no joy. Relationships are breaking. There's witchcraft. Jezebel attacks. Division. It's wall after wall after wall. Attack after attack after attack. It's like, what is going on? And yes, sometimes you got to plow and push through and you got to break through. But other times that is a sign for you to pull out and pull away and pull back. And that's a sign that God's saying, mm -mm, not here, not now. Ruska, some say suddenly. These are five signs of suddenlies. Are you feeling these signs of suddenlies right now? If this bears witness with you, I want you to give some hearts and likes. If this bears witness with you, I want you to give some hearts and likes. Five signs of suddenlies. Five signs of suddenlies. Winds of change are in the air, my friends. Winds of change. All across the earth. Hope to see you, Kisa, when I am in Vancouver, Canada in January. Winds of change are in the air. And God is shifting and changing things quickly. But you need to be willing to let go. Lay down your Isaac. You need to be willing to be a vessel to be yielded to God. Because God's about to do something mega. But trading your good for the great. It's good, but there's more and there's better and there's greater. Amen. Jesus, lift up your hands, friends. If you receive today, say amen. If you receive, give me some hearts and likes, share this on your wall, praise God. Get ready for your suddenly, friends. Get ready for your sudden moment of promotion, elevation, and transfiguration. God is about to change your address. Thank you, Melissa Shu, for being a subscriber. God is about to change your address. He is about to change your address. He's changing your address. Your zip code is changing. Amen. To abundance, prosperity. Much more, the God of the much more, more than enough. Lift up your hands, Lord, I thank you. Bless your people today. I pray for the oil of favor, the grace of God to be upon your people. Lord, I feel so stirred. And even as I just preached my heart out, it, Lord, you help me to articulate words today. Hallelujah. But Lord, I thank you for the articulation of your presence for the discernment of your spirit. And Lord, I ask you, bless your people abundantly as we are all in a season of great change and suddenly, 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 suddenly. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. I am in Dallas. I hope to see you tonight in Dallas. I'm ministering tonight in Dallas, Texas. If you're in the area, come and see me. Holla. Love you, Pastor Steve. Good to see you, Violetta, CC, Providence, Ivana. Good to see all of our friends here. Uh, if you love this content, do consider following me, giving this page a like. Evangelist Gary, good to see you. Thank you, Juan Martinez. Can't wait to meet you finally tonight, Juan Martinez, you and your family. But meet me tonight in Dallas uh, if you're in the area. And of course, next week, I'm going to be in Oahu and Kona. All right, I'll be in Hawaii next week. So come and see me in Hawaii next week. But friends, if you love our content, if you enjoyed 
this broadcast today, this breakthrough prophetic broadcast. Consider giving this page a like and a follow and even subscribe. Amen. All of your love, prayer, support, it helps us release the prophetic word of God and the ministry of the Holy Ghost all across the earth. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also do consider following me and us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, here on Facebook. God bless you, friends. I love you. Shalom. And get ready for your season of change and suddenly. God bless.